pray thee, my peerless paramour, but have you ever wondered how much they knew about neuroscience in the Middle Ages? You might be surprised to know that in the Middle Ages, while the Roman Empire was fallen, doctors were ballin'. The Islamic medical world was seeing a lot of advancement in the Middle Ages in its understanding of medicine and physiology. There was a newfound focus not only on physical health, but on how the mind and the body interact to promote health overall. This was one of the founding moments of psychology and psychiatry because of this new admiration of mental health as well as physical health. Around the year 1000 AD, the physician of the times was named Abu al-Qasim Khalaf ibn al-Abbas al-Zarawi al-Ansari. I wonder why people just call him al-Zarawi. Anyway, our buddy Big Al was known not only as one of the best surgeons of the Middle Ages, but as the father of all modern surgery. Nice job. He wrote the Kitab al-Tasrif, a 30-volume medical encyclopedia that revolutionized medical practice. The chapter in his work on surgery was translated into Latin and was used as a textbook for 500 years after. No problem selling your textbook back then, but now they gotta change it every single sem- Anyway, so our local legend Big Al did surgical treatments of head injuries, skull fractures, spinal injuries, hydrocephalus, subdural effusions, and even headache. Thanks, Al. We gained a lot of neurology knowledge from this one individual physician. Around the same time, Ibn Sina, also called Abu Ali Sina, also called Per Sina, also called Avicenna by the Latinized folks, was a Persian polymath. He was a physician, an astronomer, a philosopher, and he also wrote a textbook that was used for 500 years after his death. Come on, modern universities, get it together. In his 40 medical writings, Ibn Sina was the first to describe things like insomnia, mania, hallucinations, nightmare, dementia, epilepsy, stroke, paralysis, vertigo, melancholia, and tremors. Now that's what I call a fruit salad of mental turmoil. Ibn Sina also described a disorder that he called Janun Mufrit, which modern historians think was actually schizophrenia. He also discovered the vermis and the caudate nucleus, which are two neuroanatomical terms that we still use today. Averroes, Avenzoar, and Maimonides were three other physicians who were active in the Middle Ages Islamic medical space, and they described a lot of issues to do with the brain as well. In the 1200s and 1300s, the first human anatomy books started to circulate around Europe. These were the first anatomy books sold that included detailed drawings and descriptions of the brain. They were written by Modino de Luzzi and Guido da Vigevano. These two men were considered the restorers of anatomy because they renewed interest into medical research and the study of human disease. That's it for neuroscience in the Middle Ages, but in the next video we'll be talking about neuroscience in the Renaissance period. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please give this video a like or subscribe to the channel if you want to see when future videos come out. Take care of your brains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.